Right, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to our meeting here on the February 10th, 2015. Um, first order of business uh, is to consider uh, the approval of the minutes from our last meeting on January 20th, 2015. Is, uh, is there a motion to approve? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Motion seconded. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Very good. Minutes are approved. Uh, resolution number 30351, Grand Cliff Drive. Yes, Commissioners. Uh, yes, <coughs> November 18th uh, pre-board work session we discussed a, uh, a plan that Forrest has been working on with the uh, Cliff Drive Corridor Management Committee on how to uh, manage the traffic along Cliff Drive and uh, the memo today is from Forrest and it outlines the uh, plan of action so we recommend approval and Forrest is here to answer questions and uh, go ahead Forrest. Okay uh, yeah I thought I would just kind of walk you through it real briefly with the board that I have over here and show a few examples. Mm -hmm. Feel free to ask any questions along the way, of course. Um, and I'll kind of follow the bullet points, but I'll add in a few other things. Uh, first one, we would restrict, as we presented in November, restrict the traffic flow to one way from the west to the east, so the eastbound lane. Uh, and that's kind of reflected on there by the, the red dash on the far left, which is a Paseo clear over to Gladstone, the star at the very end. Mm -hmm. We have existing gates at both of those locations already. Um, <clears throat> second point would be uh, that the westbound lane, which is the north side of the road, becomes a dedicated bike and pedestrian lane. And I've got a few examples of some signage that we would potentially use, and we're looking at some others too. Um, up there in the top left of that, on the far left there, you've got a, a bike and a pedestrian, obviously people walking <coughs> that could go on the that could go on the pavement in the uh, in the dedicated bike ped lane. So is that one that the bikes and the pedestrians exist in one lane together? Yes, and it would be both ways. They could go either way. It would be just like a trail, basically. That, that lane would become like a trail. So, and then some, the sign up there on the far right is something that we w could use in the driving lane that would just remind people periodically that vehicle traffic stays in the right lane. So, uh, permanently close two of the gates, um, gates two and three. Those are on the map at Lookout Point Drive, kind of on your left there. There is a gate there now, but it would need to be, we need to kind of spruce it up a little bit and then close it up at the museum as well. And then down at the bottom of the hill at the museum have gates there that can open or close. And that would be to accommodate any, any bicycle races or anything like that, or like the long borders that use the area so that those gates could be opened up independently of the rest of the, of the, rest of the drive when it's closed. Um, talk about uh, some closure times, uh, which I've reflected in my memo as well. Uh, our plan would be on weekdays to close the vehicle lane each evening at dusk and open it the following morning. On weekends, our plan would be to close the vehicle lane at, on Friday at dusk and open it back up on Monday morning. And on city observed holidays, uh, close the vehicle lane the evening prior to the holiday, open it back up on the morning after the holiday. Mm -hmm. so. What was the discussion on that one? That one on the holidays? Yeah. <clears throat> uh, that was that was pretty much the discussion that we had with the uh, with the Cliff Drive uh, folks and the task force that we formed. Um, you know, I've thought of a few other things as well. Maybe it wouldn't be all city observed holidays. Maybe it would be a little bit more seasonal. Um, you know, like in the summer months, especially where we have people generally working on those holidays anyway could open it back up on those days and still close it at dusk, open it at dawn as normal, mm -hmm. but have it open during the day. That's so. kind mm -hmm. of what I was thinking. Okay. You know, because it's a city holiday doesn't necessarily mean it's a holiday for a lot that's, of other people. That's true. And, that's true. I, I, I had a little concern about that, but I mean, I don't know that that's a big issue, but it mm -hmm. was something I didn't know if it had been vetted yeah. to any degree or not. Yeah, we, and we've had a little discussion about it since I've okay. done the memo well, mark and I've discussed about it. about so. Monday holidays. I mean, you know, you look at mm -hmm. the uh, Memorial Weekend where you close it on Friday and then instead of opening it up on Monday, you open it up on Tuesday. So it kind mm -hmm. of becomes an extended weekend, whereas right. some holidays end up in the middle of the week. You know, like a Fourth of July may be on a Wednesday, then it may not be quite as logical to do it. Yeah, so we could we could kind of format a plan a year ahead of time on the holidays. I mean, obviously the holiday days of the week change every okay. you know on many years. So, will will there be resurfacing of any kind as we do this? Uh, not associated with this plan. There'd be restriping. Restriping is all yeah. because I like to say we were in Charlotte. Yeah. And the bike lanes were a, a pale green. Yeah, they painted. Oh, okay. To differentiate them from the automobile lanes. 
and that would be an ideal for something like that to make mm -hmm. it, you know, people driving it didn't know. Yeah. They could really see it without just having to see the uh, bicycle or the pedestrian, you know, on the pavement. It's, mm -hmm. you know, it's an additional expense, but if you were going to do a slurry coat or something, you know, put a, put a pigment in it to make it stand out. Yeah. And that it's one more visual reminder. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. No, that's a good idea. That's really cool, actually. Mm -hmm. yeah, like oh, I saw it in Charlotte, and I thought, oh, my God, that is so neat. <laughs> because you knew immediately what it was, and everybody driving knew, and they stayed out of it. The problem with bike lanes we have now, you cross them, and they're the same color, and there's, you know, maybe 50 feet ahead, there's a bicycle insignia, but where you cross, there may not be. So it's, it's a safety issue, too. That's interesting. Good point. I guess getting back to my question about the pedestrians and bicyclists together is this somewhere where bikes would go pretty fast uh they i guess my they could maybe yeah. you would want to not have everybody coexist where you have pedestrians well, <laughs> and bikes we have that on most of our trails though now yeah i know but that's what i was just and, and there has to be some some protocol <clears throat> you know i think and it's an some trail signage thing, some rules, right. rules mm -hmm. of the road type of thing yeah you know. and i will say though in in response to the questions concerning closing the trail to vehicular traffic on city observed holidays, I think the statement that not everybody has the same holidays off as the city gives even more reason to close it down because one of the largest concerns about Cliff Drive being open to vehicles is the tendency to dump. And my understanding, well, my, my belief is that construct, construction crews and contractors, if they're working, they're liable to dump. And so I'm not opposed in the least to closing the, 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 the lane, the, the drive down on city observed holidays. Okay. As stated in the, in the memo. Okay. <clears throat> any other questions? Or comments? Of course, anything else you want to? Uh, nope, I answer any other questions. Okay. Thank you very much. Well, I appreciate all the hard work you and the others have been doing yeah. on this. Uh, the, one, great. the one thing I did want to confirm, and I, Mark just said we have confirmed that it does not, this plan, does not interfere with scenic byways funding and that was mm -hmm. yeah. one of the things that would, <coughs> would have put a, a bollocks on it for me but yep. the, the, they've told us that no it will not that's absolutely yeah, that it doesn't affect byways the, funding so mm -hmm. that really is an important issue because that allows us to maintain it and improve mm -hmm. it as we go along correct correct so correct. good all right is there a motion to approve the um, management plan so moved is there a second, second. motion seconded for a discussion. All those in favor, say nine. All right. All right. All right. We're good. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you sir. Thanks, for us. Resolution number 30352. Yes, Commissioner, this is a consideration for an agreement with Northeast Arts KC for the annual Chalk Walk 215 up at the concourse. And uh, you have a memo in your packet from Shannon. And Heidi's Shannon today, is that, is that how this works? <laughs> okay. Let me tell you, I really appreciate Shannon. Um, she's in Hawaii, so. Oh collective size <laughs> um, so yes you get me for the next five items so here we go we're gonna start off with a nice segue from Cliff Drive into the concourse here in the old Northeast uh, um, Arts KC who is going to be hosting the chalk walk the eighth annual chalk walk on the concourse at the end of April so Rebecca Coop's here and you can tell us all about it and she brought some professional grade chalk <laughs> yes, I think you're going to have to draw lots of who gets to keep that. I'm sorry. Maybe you can color in the bike lane. No, maybe that's a possibility. That's a lot of chalk. <laughs> yes. Hey, so it's yours. You keep it, man. After every time it rains. Yes, like I say, you're going to have to draw lots. I didn't have the full box with me, so I knew I wouldn't have enough for everyone. So I figured you you work it out between yourselves. Who gets it? Um, this is our eighth year. Uh, we did our first uh, six years at the Concourse Fountain. It is a wonderful place to do that. We have the concrete canvas to draw on, uh, parks and recreation. We turn off the water so it doesn't spray and destroy the art while we're make creating it. We also use the sidewalks around the outside. And they're almost 10 by 10. We normally get at least for professional artists or a school group that does our anchor corners and we pretty much have those lined up right now it is open to the general public uh, if they want to do a large square we just require a drawing uh, we do monitor what's being drawn out there we have people who are checking it all the time but it is open to walk-ins they can come in parents kids 
they come in, we say, okay, what do you want to do? Give us a little sketch. They get the professional chalk and they can go out there and play. Um, Shannon has arranged in the past, we've always had the chalk cow. I think she said she found it. So <laughs> it might need a little retouch of chalk paint on it, but uh, that's always fun to have, uh, to have a, a vertical surface for people to draw on. We have a chalkboard van that's all painted in chalk, so we have that available and parked there on the site too. Um, some other things that go on, because it is a fun weekend, entertaining weekend. Stone Lion Puppets is agreed. They'll be there for us again. Uh, we'll have the library giving away free books. KCUMB is going to do health tests. And I'm trying to work out the deal that Walgreens will also do blood pressure checks. So it's health, fun, picnic, have a good time. Um, we're always facing possible rainy weather. We typically get through that. Last year, we had um, we set up. It poured down rain. <laughs> it cleared up, and they did draw. But the following Sunday had such a bad forecast that we actually had to cancel that. But we did have photographs of the <coughs> art, so it's one of those fleeting things. It's performance art. It's art at the moment, and people have a good time doing it. Like I say, uh, typically about 60 people, 60 artists that are there that participate and then all the kids fill in they already mentioned that so um, any questions I hope you all have an opportunity to visit it and come see us on that uh, end of April weekend and hope for good weather awesome any questions good. okay Sounds great right, thank you very much best of luck on the event once again yeah. and hope you get a lot of dry weather yeah we just hope for dry weather or at least sun it's yeah. That's really all we're asking for. Okay, thank Very you. Very good, thank you. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Is there a second? second. A motion seconded. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 The motion passes. Okay. Resolution number 30353. Okay, more art. Heidi. More art. More outdoor art. Yes. We are fans yes. of outdoor art. So um, next on the agenda is Donna Boley with the Penn Valley Park Conservancy, and they will be doing their second. Uh, Plen Air Art Fest, and that's going to be May 13th through the 16th in Penn Valley Park. Tell us about it. Thank you. This will be our second one. Last year we had about 35 artists show up. We were very pleased with that. They said we should expect at least 70 uh, this year. Uh, it'll be the three days, the 13th through the 16th. We'll have um, an artist welcome at One Park Place the third Wednesday night. Uh, they help host that, that event for us. And then we'll have three quick paints. One will be Thursday night. Um, we'll be at just off Broadway between 5 and 7. The one uh, Friday night will be at Liberty Memorial between 5 and 7. And Saturday morning. The artist said they like the Saturday morning, so they get the sunset coming in rather than the evenings always being in the evenings and in the, in, in the hot of the day. So there will be one Saturday morning from 7 to 9 in the morning and then the artwork will be on display at Buttonwood Art Space. As a special addition to this year we are adding a Sunset in the Park event with the quick paint on Friday night at Liberty Memorial so we'll be having some music in the uh, setup in that parking lot across from the Federal Reserve and close to the hiker and uh, that the music will start at like 7.30 until a little after sunset. And it will be a free event encouraging people to come in and watch the conclusion of the quick paint and to watch the sunset. Some of the best sunsets in the city are from Penn Valley Park. Um, so that will be set up from the Liberty Memorial Pioneer Mother Sunset event. And if it goes well, we're hoping at some point that might be expanded to be a, a three times in the spring event and a three times in the fall event. Uh, to get people just to come by in the early evening and watch the sunsets. That's great. Excellent. Okay. Uh, is there any questions or comments? Thanks for all that you all Thanks continue to do with the Conservancy yeah. and like keeping that park active. Yeah, it's a great program. We're, uh, we're starting our fifth year yeah. now, great. so I'm very pleased with a, 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 an organization that's in its infancy. Is keeps We keep moving along, getting uh, doing more and more. Uh, is there a motion to approve? So moved. Is there a second? Second. A motion second. All those in favor? Say aye. 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 Thank you. Okay. Okay. Resolution passes. Thank you. Thank you, Donna. Best of luck. Thank you. Thanks, Donna. Resolution number 30354. <coughs> okay, more art. <laughs> more art. Yes. This time art, art in uh, Brookside. And we have Marty Lee here with the uh, Brookside Business Association, who's going to tell us a little bit about the Brookside Art Annual, which is May 1st, 2nd, and 3rd. 
Thank you. Thanks for having us here. Thanks for letting us use your park. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, the 30th year for the Brookside Art Annual. Um, we have already selected the artist for this year. And uh, just to let you know a little sidebar with that, we had 1,050 applications for 170 spaces. Wow. So it's very competitive. It takes a day and a half to make the selection. We have three different jurors every year, usually an artist that is won an award the year before, and then two kind of curators, whether from the Art Institute or, or some art-related place, commerce or something like that. So it's different every year. It's a blind jury, so they don't know the names <coughs> of the artists, they don't know where the work is from, they don't know the price, any of that stuff. Um, it's all digital, so we've got the, the uh, jurors that are lined up with their own laptops, and they um, are seeing this, the five slides that each artist provides. Um, are, they're up on, projected up on the wall, and while they look up there, they can vote on their laptops, <coughs> and they can vote from one to five, and they're not allowed to use three. So they have to, you know, make a decision on this. And so, like, for instance, there might be 200 applications for jewelry. And so they go through all the slides of all the jewelers and they vote on them and then we pick like the top 20 knowing that we want about 20 jewelers in the show. And then we go through and, and do that with all the different media. So that's why it takes a day and a half. It's fascinating. Um, there's a number of artists that come, are coming back again this year or are invited back, but there's a lot of new stuff that's out there too. So it makes it kind of fun. And some that are usually in it that didn't get selected this year. So that's kind of the bad part, but it makes for a good show. Um, we pride ourselves on making it, it, it is just an art show. We don't have enough room to make it a festival, so we don't do a lot of outside um, <coughs> vendors. We have our own food vendors, and we have a children's activity tent, and that's about it. So uh, it is a three-day uh, three event, and um, this year we will have sunshine again like we did last year. No snow. No snow. That was two years ago. Two years ago. Yes. 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 Yeah. 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 Any, any questions? Uh, any questions or comments at this time? That's great. No, great. Okay. Uh, is there a motion to accept? So approved. So moved. Second. Motion seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Thanks, Thanks, and we'll Thank see you, you there. Look great. forward to it. Thanks, Thank you so much. Uh, resolution number 30355. Okay. Uh, Heidi. Uh, Another one of yours on this yes. is an Easter egg hunt. This is an Easter egg hunt in Soap Park that is put on by the Multimedia Group. This is their second year for doing it. Um, Easter's a little bit early this year. It will be on April the 5th. So we have hmm. Cecilia Perez, who's not going to talk. <laughs> 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 Sorry, my name is Norma. Nice to meet you guys. Hi, nice Hi there. Um, we, this is going to be the second year uh, Multimedia Spanish radio station in Kansas City called La Poderosa. Uh, prior years, we done it at Benjamin Ranch, as you guys know, they closed it. Um, mm -hmm. Now, last year was the first year doing it at Swole Park, so <coughs> hopefully we can do it this year. Just activities, it's a one-day event, uh, five hours, the Easter hunt, vendors, food, mm -hmm. that's, that's it, basically. Right. Any questions? Yeah. How many people do you all expect? Expecting a uh, thousand people or a little bit less <coughs> last year we were expecting less and it was just a little bit more <laughs> being in Kansas City Swole Park a lot of people get lost it was amazing so hopefully this year will be kind of the same or a little bit higher okay great mm -hmm. any other questions counts? Yep. Right. is there a motion to approve so moved. is there a second second and the motion seconded all those favors say aye aye, aye. aye. thank you best of luck uh, resolution number 30356. Uh, yes, Commissioners, uh, another item being handled by uh, Heidi and Shannon. This is a tour of Kansas City, uh, kind of shifting back to the Cliff Drive yeah. area again. We've come full circle now. We're back at Cliff Drive, and this is for the tour of Kansas City, which was going to take place on May 29th and 30th on Cliff Drive. And then there's also a, a fun little festival that's going to be going on in conjunction with that that will take place on the grounds of the Kansas City Museum. We have Matt Maurer, there you are, here, um, to tell you all about it. This is the 52nd year for the Tour of Kansas City bicycle event. Um, historically, it has been held on Cliff Drive on many occasions in the past. Um, I'm expanding it this year. It's a four-day event with two of them, like she said, taking place down at Cliff Drive. Friday night's a uh, time trial inside the park, and um, Saturday will be a... Um, 
a circuit race through the park and up on the uh, some of the city streets that will be closed off for that part. Um, I'm adding a 5K run to the event to bring in uh, more people from the community, get them a little more involved. And as she said, we are also adding a microbrew and barbecue festival to kind of showcase uh, Kansas City microbreweries and barbecue and, and get a wider audience there for the sporting events as well to kind of view that and hopefully eventually start taking part in more of the activities that are part of um, that. Any questions? Any questions or comments? How, how long is the bike race? I, 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 should, I should know this. I don't know it, so I'm sorry. Um, Saturday's bike race is a three-mile loop. Okay. And it's, it's broken. Uh, right? Yeah, it's broken up in categories. So you have beginner categories all, all the way up onto the uh, pro level categories so they'll race you know the children will race 20 minutes the pros will race up to an hour and a half so there's different races basically going on all day on the same course okay. hey mark which one are you going to be in yeah for real yeah. are you doing yeah. the grand fondo on this we're doing the grand fondo that's going to be memorial day okay. that'll be the week the monday before this okay. out at least excuse, excuse us what's can the you, grand you, fondo you, <laughs> <laughs> i mean yeah. you're a little sounded, too sounded, sophisticated for us <laughs> Seniors. I'll let you know when registration's <laughs> open and you can sign them up for the Pro 1-2 race if you All want. Right. <laughs> I, I don't do the, the young guys do the fastest three mile. I do the, the Rand Fond with more distance. Okay. Yeah. But it's got, it's got time too, but there's more distance. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Very good. Is there any other? Oh, where will be the barbecue microbrew festival? Uh, that's actually on the grounds of the museum. Yeah, on the grounds so of the, the museum. start finish line is right there at the top of the hill. <laughs> so it's kind of everything's going to be kind of together in one area for everybody to kind of take part in whatever yeah, they would like to. We'll be there to celebrate Mark's win on the grand yes, final. <laughs> <laughs> and then Anna Marie, Denise are listening too. I know they're gonna, looking forward to this. <laughs> <laughs> barbecue and beer, right? And it's a good combo. Just, just don't have no pedestrians. Is that right, Mary Jane? Mm -hmm. No pedestrians on there. Separate lines. No, separate lines. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, and the timing on this, too, based on what we were talking about earlier with getting Cliff Ride ready to go and all that stuff that Forrest discussed, mm -hmm. this falls right yeah, after that all takes place. Yeah, we've arranged, so theoretically it'll all work out. Right. <laughs> there you go. And that's it. Best laid hands. Yeah. <laughs> And with that, is there a motion to approve? So <laughs> moved. Second. <laughs> motion second. Okay, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 <coughs> resolution passes. Thank you. Thank That's you very much. Right. That's yeah. mm -hmm. uh, resolution number 30357. Okay, commissioners, uh, this is <coughs> an agreement with Guadalupe Center, <coughs> the Tony Gary Community Center. Uh, you have a memo in your packet from uh, Linda Miles, and uh, Linda's here to answer any questions you might have. This is Guadalupe's uh, 15th year. They started in 2000, and this is the annual men's president's basketball tournament. They are very, very well organized. They present inside and outside uh, police officers to monitor the parking lot and the inside the facility. They expect 200 plus, and they will be selling concessions there. Mm -hmm. All right, any questions? Mm -hmm. And with that, is there a motion to approve? Is there a second? Second. second. Motion seconded. Uh, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Thank uh, you. And I'll abstain from that vote. So. Thank you. Uh, resolution number 30358. Uh, yes, commissioners, this is a uh, consideration of a bid award to National Streetscape for citywide park trails and access improvements. Uh, you have a memo in your packet from Travis that aligns the scope at a variety of different locations. I would recommend approval. If you have any questions, Travis is here to answer those. All right, any questions, Travis, in regards to this bid award? Okay. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Motion seconded. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. Resolution passes. Resolution number 30359. Yes, Commissioners, this is a contract to Citywide Electric for two emergency generators, uh, one at the uh, Brush Creek and one at the Tony Gary Community Centers. Uh, you have a memo in your packet from Travis that outlines the scope and the cost. Would recommend approval. And uh, I would mention uh, the funding comes from the public safety sales tax for this, so it's not coming from the parks budget. And pretty much controlled by general services, and uh, mm -hmm. but because it's in ours, we have a say on it. Yeah, that's right. We actually have requisition authority now. And we have, and Bob Lawler on Travis' staff will work with a gentleman by the name of Charles Harris in general services to coordinate all this. Okay. Mm -hmm. Great. Glad that that's being done. Um, is there a motion to approve? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Motion seconded. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 <coughs> the passes. 
Resolution number 30360. Uh, yes, Commissioner, this is consideration <coughs> of an agreement for professional services with International Architects Atelier for work of uh, Kansas City Museum, Corinthian Hall. Mm -hmm. And uh, this, in essence, gets our uh, uh, serious planning efforts underway yep. way and get, get everything moving forward to get a uh, good design. And uh, is spelled out in that second paragraph. It talks about the geotech reports and the environmental assessment. Uh, you have that memo from Travis, and then, of course, Anna Marie is here, who will be very much involved in this process. Okay. And it's my understanding they've done some of the past work. Yes. And this is right. more of a continuation right. That's of their work. Right. right. Mm -hmm. yep. Okay, great. That's correct. Are there any other <coughs> questions or comments? All right, hearing none, is there a motion to approve? So moved. Is there a second? second? All right, motion second. All those favor, soon probably say aye. 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 Okay, good. Resolution passes. Resolution number 30361. Uh, yes, commissioners, this is an uh, amendment with Cohen Partners, the firm that's doing our design work for Washington Square Park. Uh, time only. Yep. Uh, no additional funds. This gets us through the latter, well, basically till November of this year. Right. Questions? Are there any further updates, or any additions or changes to what we've been presented before? Or is it? There, there really isn't. We'll hopefully have something from you. We're kind of waiting to see what we get from the uh, folks at Van Trust. You know, those are our partners that through <coughs> uh, the folks at Union Station. So we have a meeting coming up here, I think actually maybe later this week to get an update, and then we'll know more at that time. Great. So okay. nothing's Great. changed at this point. Okay. okay. All right. Any other questions, comments? Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Is there a second? Second. A motion second. All those favor, signal public say aye. 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 Resolution passes. Resolution number 30362. Uh, yes, Commissioner, this is uh, change order number six, National Streetscape. Um, looks like it's change order number six is the final change order. And uh, in the third paragraph it talks about where the work would be done. And if you have any questions, Travis is here to answer those. Okay. Any questions of Travis? All right. Hearing none, is there a motion to approve? Some is there a mm -hmm. second? Second. Motion second. But all those favor, so you probably say aye. 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 Resolution passes. Resolution number 30363. Uh, yes, Commissioner. Change order number two with Keys Construction, Garrison Community Center. Uh, this is uh, spelled out in the second paragraph. Uh, puts in the basketball floor and puts in an elevated walking track. Uh, recommend approval. Again, if you have any questions, Travis is here to answer those. Any questions? Regarding? Do we have a timeline on completion for that? If, if we were to approve it, wouldn't, would there be a timeline for completing this? Go ahead, Travis. Good afternoon, Commissioners. Good afternoon, the uh, timeline for completion right now, substantial completion, is June 15th. Of 2015. 2015. That's Fantastic. Correct. Yeah. Okay, great. Any further comments, questions? Hearing none, is there a motion to approve? So moved. <clears throat> All right, is there a second? Second. Motion to second. All those in favor, so you can probably say aye. 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 Okay, and the resolution passes. Resolution number 30364. Uh, yes, Four Commissioners. Uh, six gifts from the uh, Shriners organization. Recommend approval. All right, very good. Is there a motion to accept the, uh, the contribution? So moved. Is there a second? second. Motion to second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Very good. This passes on to the uh, director's report. Travis. Find a closer chair. Just sit right there, right? <laughs> you can sit right there. That, like Patty did, just get back up. And <laughs> go ahead. Travis. Good afternoon, commissioners. You <laughs> should, should have in front of you a copy of the uh, handout today. It's Hidden Valley Park Improvements, and uh, the latest is the installation of a shelter. It's a $343,000 project. This is part of uh, $1.3 million worth of work that's been done up at Hidden Valley Park. Uh, the uh, shelter is actually up. We have a completion of spring to allow for uh, landscaping and planting of that area up there. Uh, you'll notice the uh, pictures on the back as far as the shelter itself. And um, I will add to this that one of our uh, more vocal supporters from the Northland, very um, passionate supporter from Northland, sent our director an email telling him what level of use this has received since it was up. And they said it's just fantastic okay. to see this area utilize this park <laughs> with the uh, shelter and the playground and so yeah. forth. So he's very happy. Good. Yeah, that cool. is good to hear. Yes, yeah, I was uh, a yes, <laughs> yes, he's he's a taskmaster and 
we appreciate his input on all of these things because he sure. keeps us on our toes. <laughs> and uh, it's, it's greatly appreciated when we have citizen involvement and community ownership in our parks, and that's what this is all about. Thank you very much, sir. Well, sir. Heidi. <coughs> Hello again. Hello. Um, just a few things. I'll make this short since you've heard plenty from me already. Um, the race fee ordinance did go in front of city council at the end of last month and did pass. So we have some new uh, racing permit fees that will go in effect in 2016 along with some other kind of communications items that will go in effect immediately or are in effect now I guess, right? Yes. So again, I want to thank uh, Commissioner uh, Mary Jane Judy for her assistance with that and Jan Markison, of course, for spearheading the effort. She wanted to get that done before she was out of office and she did. So um, we also are now in the doing, still doing the Kansas City Casey Parks user online survey. The deadline to get that completed is the 16th. Uh, we have got one more than a thousand completed today, which is huge. We have typically run about 400. So um, this is going to be a big year. I haven't looked at the at the survey results, so I'm a little scared. But <laughs> <laughs> since there's that much interest suddenly, <coughs> but that shall be fun to uh, kind of analyze here <laughs> over the next few weeks. Uh, we have a busy week this week. Lots of love is in the air, of course, with Valentine's Day. Um, Starlight Theater is starting out this evening, actually, with their first indoor series, which is kind of cool that they're doing it. It's a musical parody of Fifty Shades, so I don't know anything about that. Um, on, <laughs> on February the 12th, <laughs> uh, we're having a father-daughter dance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just, I've never read the book. <laughs> father-daughter dance at Westport Roanoke. We've got a pre-Valentine brunch, that is, at Rush Creek Community Center. Uh, an event, Jazzy Affair, at Bruce R. Watkins Cultural Heritage Center, which is celebrating Charlie Parker. Uh, <coughs> Kansas City Museum's having their tea on, the, actually, Valentine's Day in the morning. And then I thought this was kind of clever, the Lion Creek Community Center Curling Club's doing a Learn to Curl, and it's called Romancing the Stone. That's cute. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Those guys are nothing but clever. <laughs> and then, of course, the highlight of the week is the Lock Your Love on the Old Red Bridge uh, Valentine's Day event where we will just have the... Ambi nice ambient lighting out there on that evening so people can go and, and lock their um, love lock on the old red bridge. So I don't know if you wanted to give everyone the example sample of what a love lock looks like. <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> Commissioner Hackett has ordered one. Oh, oh, nifty nifty. Gifty. Yeah. <laughs> and that is from the company Lockets, Lockets. who um, actually gives a percent of their proceeds back to Kansas City Parks. And over the couple of years that we've been yeah. partners with them, they've given uh, at right at about $1,000. So, yeah, it's very generous. So watch for her on, on TV. The worst happens. Give me this back. Unlock your love day. <laughs> All right. So Amber's doing that on Saturday night, right? Well, I think she's going to do it Actually, for TV it this the afternoon. Tonight. Oh, you owe oh, oh, TV. <laughs> yes. Whoa. Thanks to Heidi's influence. Um, <laughs> oh, my I just requested. I said if you wanted to make it more of a romantic thing, I wouldn't so it's a have you do it on too. TV. <laughs> Well, right. and they pick warm weather too. They yeah, yeah. wait till we got you know. Right, right. 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 Yeah. All right. You know, this is this is fantastic. Yeah. There's an awful lot of fun things and things for everybody, and we all got quite a bit of a kick out of it too. And I think this is just as indicative of where we're going and where we have come in the last couple of years. And uh, it's very encouraging. And I'm hopeful and I'm pretty confident that the thousand responses are going to be favorable. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm excited to look at them, yes. Okay, and then as you can see, our web analytics analytics from January are web visits have gone back up. Um, they were kind of down over the holidays a little bit. Oh, okay. Yeah. This is typical. Yes, typical. Okay. And they're still twice as much as they were last, awesome. doubled what they were last January. So we're going up, and then, of course, our social media continues to go big as well. Um, not only is Shannon in Hawaii, but Jesse's actually in jury duty, so I want to thank Doug here for <laughs> stepping in <laughs> and running the show today. <laughs> so I'm back there by myself. Come by and see me. <laughs> I just want to commend you guys, you and your staff, on the social media presence. I think it's just amazing. It's, 
it really does help. And it's kind of fun when you see your friends or coworkers that are in a photo you know, from ice skating lessons or something like that. And people get a real big kick out of it. Thank so you. It is. It's, it's really rewarding to do social media. Of course, it also gives people a venue to um, yeah. <laughs> send out information about you, <laughs> or oh, <dear>. comment, <laughs> or say what they wish. But it, it's good because it's it's easy to respond to as well. But yeah, we've been doing some fun things on social media, and I appreciate that you appreciate them and notice them and like them. <laughs> I like a lot. I mean, yes. <laughs> Instagram, like all of those. Great. So Thank you. Sometimes. Fantastic. All right. Nobody on the public docket. Mm -hmm. All right. With the uh, calendar review, right? Yes. You want to look yes. At those real quick? Uh, Heidi, as yeah, usual, covered quite a bit of it for the First month of February. We've got um, meeting right after this? we have this, uh, yeah, the Casey Museum uh, Foundation right after we can go back into the other room for that. Uh, Platte County Parks Partners tomorrow at 1130. Um, of course, we have the President's Holiday come the 16th, uh, Starlight <coughs> Board Meeting on the 19th, and Libby Memorial Building and Grounds, uh, Mary Jane on the 330 the 19th, and then um, Friends of the Zoo Board Meeting the 25th. Kind of gets through the month of February. And then our next meeting would be um, March 3rd. Okay. And Carmen is outside the room, but she's paying attention to what we're doing in here. Uh, her back is not allowing her to sit very comfortably. And so oh. she's, oh. Oh. she's probably walking around the, the boardroom. Uh, okay. Anyway, that's where Carmen's at right now. Uh -huh. Back's probably been about there. We all hope for a speedy recovery for right. Carmen. Yeah, so we do too. Mark, yeah. he's off. <laughs> I know, man. Seriously. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know. Not you, Terry. You can't do that. <laughs> yeah. Okay, everybody's back here. All right. With that, uh, meeting is adjourned. <clears throat> Until the next one.